Good morning, and welcome to worship on this day, November 8th, 2020. It is a beautiful fall day out there. Emily and I were talking about how we didn't know how to dress today when it's, I don't even know what it's, what the temperature is right now, but it was in the 50s when I was walking the dog at 615 and, you know, wow. It's a good problem. Yes, thankfully, because I did not get yard work done in October because it got too cold and wet. So I will get my yard work done. Thank you. I'm grateful for the reprieve. So enjoy that sunshine. And um, we'll just acknowledge what a week it was. We knew it was going to be a week. Um, it took five days. And I, I'm not sure it's official. Well, it's not officially official until the Electoral College. But... We have a president-elect. Um, the election revealed what we, what we already knew, that um, we are divided in our views um, of politics. Um, but we celebrate uh, president-elect Joe Biden and vice president-elect Kamala Harris. I think, uh, as, as I think many women are pretty excited that we have our first woman in the executive branch. Um, and it's pretty exciting that she is uh, a, a, a black woman, Southeast Asian woman, and child of an, of an immigrant. I think that's pretty awesome, and there's much to celebrate there. Looks, looks a little more like America, so wonderful. Um, also, we are super happy and excited for the Mount Vernon volleyball team. The, the girls did awesome. Way to go, Coach Willems and Maddie Cranston, our own Presbyterian connection on the, t on the team. And um, I, I mentioned this to, to Maggie on Facebook, but I was just so grateful to have that distraction this week <laughs> as we waited and waited and waited. Um, so thank you guys for um, your hard work and just the way that you played and you did things the right way. And, um, the, the final, the, the, the championship uh, match did not go as had been hoped, but you guys fought to the end. You did your best, and we're just so proud of you. And my gracious, making it to the state tournament is nothing to be poo-pooing. And so we're just grateful for you. And so glad you had the season. So glad you had the season. Um, <clears throat> when I officiate weddings, uh, I do a, I do a, a sermon, a little homily, and um, I always feel like I'm the downer, because in that moment I say, hey, just a little reminder that this, the party, and the celebration, and the fancy clothes, and all the gifts, is not reality, that is not marriage, <laughs> that's just the wedding ceremony, and I try to bring, bring the couple's attention back to the reality of what lies ahead, and so it is today, with this <laughs> service, <laughs> I'm the downer. Uh, I had decided long ago that, that the Sunday after um, the election it would be appropriate to do a service of lament and repentance and so we're going to do that today so there's, there's, there's the both and I, you know, just recognizing that some people are celebrating and some people are angry and every possible emotion in between um, so I think there's much worth lamenting and repenting of today, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But just a few announcements. We are having our first Sunday Zoom um, Bible study today with our um, study Into the Light. The link for that, the Zoom link for that, went out in your weekly email. Um, we'll start it at about 11.15. That gives me a little chance to regroup after worship. There are, there's one more study remaining. Connie Prophet, I'm sorry I didn't get it to you, but join us anyway, because we'll, we'll, you can be part of it, and I will get it to you this week. Um, so if you're in Cedar Rapids, I can do two drop-offs. Um, so that's 11.15. This coming Saturday, November 14th, from 4 o'clock until 5.30, uh, Don Birch and Carol Frazee will be again at the church for a drop-off, a second chance, if you missed it on Halloween, uh, the uh, uh, clean, gently worn coats for, you know, infants through, through adults, 
uh, and hygiene items for Southeast Lynn, um, Kleenex boxes, shampoo, lotion, body wash, and, and we'd, like, we'd like the regular sizes, um, lip balms, I don't know, any, any of that kind of stuff, the hygiene items to help uh, people, especially thinking about winter, because it will get cold eventually, and just having those kind of things for people. And also, I think it would, uh, what would be welcome is $25 gift cards to Gary's or Brothers or gas stations. Dollar General, I don't know. So just, those would all be welcome too. So 4 to 5.30 next Saturday, I might recommend that Carol and Don set up downstairs so it can be a drive-by drop-off, you know, on the lower level. And we'll send that out again to remind you. But thanks for your generosity in supporting our neighbors in need. Uh, and finally, the Blind Spot is meeting once during the months of November and December. On Wednesday, December 2nd at 7 p.m., the link for that, the Zoom link for that goes out in our, in our weekly email, and we will finish discussing Ibram Kendi's book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, which is excellent, and then we'll move on to something else because we will have accomplished anti-racism, won't we? have done no but it's it's a start <laughs> it's a start right we're just expanding our brains okay um because we're doing a prayer of lament we don't have the joys and concerns in the usual spot but let me share a few with us um we sent out in a prayer chain email not too long ago um the andreessen's daughter Kirsten, Kristen, her grandfather-in-law had COVID and was not doing well, and he did die this week, and we, um, we grieve with them, and we grieve with all families that are, that are separated by this disease when it happens. Um, just everybody who's struggling, and I know a cousin of mine has it right now and is not in serious condition, but it is not enjoyable. So um, for everybody who's struggling, um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Emily Walsh's dad, Fred, uh, started dialysis this last week. Um, what they have learned, because he's been in the hospital for about three weeks now, and just they haven't quite known, um, he appears to have a rare form of cancer that doesn't create tumors, but instead creates misshapen proteins that act like cement and cause organs to fail. How about that? So his, his kidneys were starting to fail. The um, dialysis is helping with that. And they have a couple more tests or a test or two to, do to determine how best to treat this. But um, it will probably be chemotherapy of some sort. It has been a ride. But um, we are grateful that there is a diagnosis. We pray that this is going to help Fred feel better. And of course, we continue to, um, and you know, they're going to be able to help him live longer and better um, with greater health. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Terry Lesmeyer, Maggie Willem's dad, uh, the therapy for him continues. It's been, well, September 25th, he had surgery to remove a brain tumor. Um, progress and healing is very slow, and it's, it's hard. Uh, he is making improvement, but it is slow, and it is, of course, not where the family is, was hoping he would be by now. He'll be moving um, in the next week or so to a specialty neurobrain injury rehabilitation center in Ankeny. Um, that's farther away. They only allow one family member um, to have access, which brings its own hardship and difficulty. Just uh, let us continue to pray for Terry and for Maggie and Michael and Maid and everybody who loves Terry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray, um, it was so easy to miss it, but Hurricane Etta slammed into Central America and did all sorts of damage. Um, it, it becomes more personal because of the Rieger's family connection with uh, Lupita's family members in, in Honduras. Um, her mother, Sylvia, they were flooded, and it was, they were so concerned about her, and it's just difficult. And then um, brother-in-law's mother, uh, who, who has had a stroke, was in the hospital. It's just, it's just awful. It's just 
is just awful and it just keeps coming and it's economic and it's environmental and it's COVID and it's just so hard. So for that, for everyone in Honduras who just slammed, and, and not just Honduras, but Central America, and, and, and when natural disasters and difficulties happen in the midst of this, and it just makes it harder. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then finally, I have um, Joe Williams' friend Jim had, uh, is recovering from surgery to remove, um, they removed a tumor from his bladder. He did get to go home. That's good news. Um, but, you know, still waiting for pathology report and all that. So for Jim and his ongoing recovery, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then let's just um, remember Shirley Peterson and Pearl Martin, um, uh, Georgina Nevins, all of, our, all of our loved ones who are in hospice care and families who are separated from those that they love who are in, in I'll say acute care, in this case hospice, but just that difficulty. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Okay, wow, we're not even done with worship yet. That's a lot. We've already lamented a lot. <sighs> Boy, I'm feeling the need to take a deep breath. So I invite you to take one. Maybe it's because we were all holding our breath all week. Yeah, so take a deep breath. And um, remember, remember that we worship a God who is as close to us as breath, who the story goes, right? This is the narrative. It's not a science textbook, but it is a beautiful image, and I know it helps me, but God took the stuff of the earth, formed it, and breathed life into it, and that's us. So God is our source of life, health, and our breath reminds us of that. Our breath reminds us of our connection with God, and we share that breath, right, with one another. We all need that breath, and COVID reminds us of this in a negative way, but the breath, that air, that oxygen recycles, and we all share it, literally, but we, so we, our breath reminds us that we need God. We are in the presence of God. And even across physical distance, pandemic, all the ways that we are divided, we are still connected to one, or, one another and we still need one another. So with that renewed awareness of this truth, fundamental truth about our existence, let us worship God together. And I shall light the candles as another reminder of God's presence with us. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. I would like to invite you to join with me in the call to worship. Out of the depths we cry to you, O Lord. Hear, Hear our voice and answer our, our prayers. prayers. The word of the Lord is like fire in my bones. So, so then, then whether, whether we, we live or whether, whether we, die, we die, we are the Lord's. What does the Holy One require of us? To, to do, do justice, justice, to, to love, love kindness, and, and to, to walk, walk humbly with, with our, our God. God. Now join us in singing 466, Come and Fill Our Hearts with Your Peace. This is a Taze chant, so we'll sing it through several times until we're done. That's right. <laughs>
aware of how often we have missed the mark in our lives, let us stand in the presence of the God of unending love and one another as we make our confession. Merciful God, we mourn, we mourn the, the violence and injustice that takes root in many forms and in many places far and near. We recognize the roots of conflict in ourselves and our, and our complicity in systems of power and control. We confess that stereotypes, envy, suspicion, and racism shape our perceptions and influence our actions. We acknowledge that at times we fear our neighbors and that we contribute to suspicion, fear, and violence. In your mercy, holy God, help us to confess and repent of these sins. Lead us to cry out with the prophets until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Guide us as we reaffirm our calling as your people to become repairers of the breach and restores of the streets to, to live, live in. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Hear are these words of assurance. To all who turn from sin in sorrow to all who turn to God in hope. This is God's word of grace. We are accepted. We are forgiven. We are loved. This gift we have from God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. And now we'll sing 750, Goodness is Stronger Than Era. Evil. 750. What was I saying? <laughs> creation. The, the old is passed away and we and live, live as signs of reconciliation and love. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And also with you. And also with you. We love you. Mm -hmm. We miss you. Miss you. Oh my gosh, do we miss you. Oh, so, so, so true. And we're glad that we can stay safe this way because that's really important especially right now. Goodness gracious. Amen. All right. Children, I invite you to join me for the discovery time that I just made up in my head about 10 minutes ago. And we'll continue to make up right now. I couldn't decide what to do, friends. There's a lot to think about. So I have, um, I have here a kaleidoscope. You guys have kaleidoscopes? You've ever looked through kaleidoscopes? You know, there's a lot of different ways for kaleidoscopes to work. Some of them have like a, um, I don't know, a container at the end with a bunch of pieces of broken glass, a mirror, and you, you, you move it. And as you move it, of course, it changes what you're looking at. Sometimes it can be mirror, and there's mirrors in there as well. Um, this one works with just um, a glass sphere marble, glass marble, clear glass marble, so that, you know, like right now, ooh, I'm looking up at the, the chandelier lights, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool, yeah, so it looks brighter, ooh, oh, the window, 
the stained glass window over there, that's really pretty. And then, um, oh, the carpet actually is kind of nice too. Uh, Emily, I think I'd like to look at your sweater. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you might get dizzy. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's a little, okay, I'm not, I'm not quite getting it, but uh, very nice, very nice. Oh, and the flower, so, okay. So this is fun, I wish, I wish we could pass it around and everyone could look. Um, but maybe you can imagine what that's like. Um, and here's where I'm going with the kaleidoscope. I was thinking about that this this week. Um, I shouldn't talk about my son because, you know, he is my son and it's his life. But, but uh, you know, we, we had a few, is we had a little issue this week on Friday. And I totally understand it. It was homeschool day for us, at home learning for us. And Teddy said, well, you know, it's Friday. I don't feel like doing my, my homework this morning. And we thought, you know what? It's okay. If you don't want to do it this morning, that's okay. And, um, but then by the end of the day, guess what? He was sorry that he hadn't done it because it was going to be hanging over his head the next day. And we ended up doing homework Friday night and then Saturday morning. And he, it, was, it, was pre, it was a pretty stressful and pretty negative thing. Um, just hard. He felt really upset and, and could, you know, really could only see things one way. And I was thinking about how a kaleidoscope works is, you know, it really depends on what you're looking at. And um, I think there's a lot of that happening right now in the country. You know, it's not just Teddy and it's not just me. It just all depends on what we're looking at, whether there's, um, whether we feel like, things are good or whether we feel like things are bad. It all depends on what we look at. I guess I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with this, but just, but just to acknowledge that, right? That there is a whole lot of reality. There are good things and there are hard things and a bunch of stuff in between. Um, some of it, you know, just and a lot of uncertainty. And it just kind of depends on where we look how um, how it feels, you know, how we're feeling. But I, I do just want to remind us all that we, that God holds all of it. And, um, you know, I confess I, 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 I am not doing as well as I should in praying because uh, it's so easy to be distracted. And I need to do a better job of praying. Um, I also brought as a little visual aid uh, a stuffed cat. Because there's this idea in um, that we should be in our, in our life of faith, we should be like a cat. Now, I've never had a cat. But what I know of cats, I've watched people with cats. And sometimes cats are active, but I've noticed that cats really like to hang out, don't they? I mean, they really like to, yeah. Lay here. Like, if there was actually a cat, the cat would be like this, right? Actually, the cat would be like this, right on top of my manuscripts, right? Just like, hey, hey, um, hanging out and um, resting and um, just being. And um, we, need, we need to do some of that. We need to do that probably more often. Because I think even though there's not a lot going on right now, um, you know, not, there's not a lot of things to do in some ways where uh, our brains are always working and there's just a lot of stuff to be con thinking about and concerned about and we just need to rest. And there's a line from a psalm that says, be still and know that I am God. <sighs> be still and know that I am God. And I just think we could all spend a little more cat time being still and knowing that God is God. And I try when I remember, which again, I'm not doing a good job of that, and I, I'm failing as a spiritual leader, but I'm going to get better, is the, to breathe in, be still and know, and breathe out that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And I think that's a prayer that we could all do of all ages. Okay, so we're going to have the cat hang out here. Maybe we'll have the cat hang out on the communion table. I think the cat would like that. The cat should hang out with Jesus, but that's it. So, okay, 
So that's what I have for us today, pulled out of thin air. Children, I hope you know that you are loved. I hope you know that you are missed. I hope that um, you are hanging in there in this weird, weird time. And um, yeah, that you are well. Um, love you. Let's, uh, let's, do, let's do pretzel prayer. May the Lord... Watch between, Watch between me and thee, me and thee while, we're absent, while we're absent, one from another. One from another. Amen. 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 All right. Scripture. In the beginning. <laughs> you say it. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the, and word, the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So our first scripture reading this morning comes from Luke's gospel, chapter 4, verses 16 through 30. And this is when Jesus goes back to his hometown and reads scripture at the local synagogue. So we invite you to listen for God's word to you here. And then it is followed by, uh, well, I'll, I guess I'll announce that when we get to it. So <laughs> when Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to, pro to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Sorry if that's really loud. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's all good. Okay. <laughs> he said to them, Doubtless you will, you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows of Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a server famine over all, oh, a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. Elijah? Elisha. 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 Yes. <laughs> it looks like Elisha. It does. It does. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> there were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. And our second reading comes from Revelation chapter 22. This is the end of the book, verses 1 through 5. And this is the image of the tree of life by the river of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. 
goodness, I only have one contact in. That's, 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 that's all, it's all good. It's all good. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Yes. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Whew. What a week. What a week it was. Full of all kinds of emotions. Not sure what to expect. Not sure how things were to go. Were going to go down. And then, um, after we heard the election was called yesterday, here's what I was remembering, as a, as I was holding that with knowing that I was going to stand here and preach to you this morning. The Sunday after the Iowa Supreme Court's 2009 marriage equality decision legalizing same-gender marriage, I was downstairs by the double doors um, before worship when Bob and Dorothy Gaines arrived. And Bob said to me immediately, he said, well, I suppose you're going to gloat this morning. Bob and I loved each other but we disagreed on homosexuality. He held a much more traditional, well, I don't know what to call it. He thought it was wrong. He thought the Bible said it was wrong. It was clear that the Bible said it was wrong, and I believe differently. And as I headed into worship that morning, I tried to hold that in balance, that, to hold that tension. And we acknowledged in our Celebration. We acknowledged the decision and that it was good, great news for many people, and, um, but also recognized that for some people they thought the world was coming to an end. And um, there was that tension that morning between those who were celebrating and those who believed that we had lost our way. And um, that was a hard morning because I really did want to celebrate. I really did want to just celebrate and say, yes, this is, the this is right. Um, it is a challenge uh, when things like this happen because, as you know, I have very strong opinions about what is right, and those opinions are rooted deeply in my faith, how I read scripture, my prayer life, what I read and learn from others' experience and learning, conversations that I have. I absolutely believe that the biblical trajectory is an ever outwardly expanding circle of who is welcome, of who is included in the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the reign of God, who is family. God, I believe, is always challenging us to go farther, or maybe it's come closer, I don't know, but we're, 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 we are challenged to change our hearts and minds and lives and to open up to others. I absolutely believe that. Just as an example of that is the reading from Luke this morning. Now, it can be a little bit confusing because when Jesus reads the portion from Isaiah, you know, he's basically saying the messianic prophecy and saying it's fulfilled in your hearing and saying, here, I'm the Messiah. And you'd think that that would be what would make them angry, but it's not. That's not what makes them angry. What makes his friends and neighbors angry is um, when, he, when Jesus talks about how God was faithful to people who were outsiders. How God, in a difficult time, chose to bless and help Gentiles. The widow of Zarephath, she lived in Sidon. That's, another, that's, a, that's Gentile territory. She was a foreigner, but God sent Elijah, the great prophet, to a foreigner. And then Naaman, the Syrian, he was an officer in an army that, that they, they fought against, right? 
and God healed Naaman. Even as there were other people in Israel, the in crowd with leprosy. As Jesus points this out, this is what upset them. This is what drove them to rage and to the threat of violence. Um, this insistence on including the marginalized and outsiders. It is foundational in Jesus' ministry. I absolutely believe that. Even, the, even that image from, I love that image of the tree of life and the river of life and the trees of the, the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. That's the end vision of like where we're supposed to be headed. And it's for the healing of the nations, of all of us, right? I just, I believe that's where we're headed. I, um, now, I think it is obvious to all of you that I believe with all my heart that marriage equality is right and good and faithful. It is equally obvious to you, I think, that I believe our current president and his administration have done terrific harm to this country. That they have fed mistrust of our institutions in ways that are deeply destructive, and that like an abuser, this is classic abuse, he has denied the truth, he has accused others of exactly what he himself is doing, He's accused them of doing it, and he reverses the role of a of victim and oppressor all the time. All the time. The acronym for that is DARVO. Uh, deny, um, uh, accuse, reverse, victim, oppressive. DARVO. And it is well known to people, to those who work with um, people who have been abused. And that is what has happened. It has happened over and over again, and now not just the president is doing it, but I'm sorry, but the Republican Party is doing that too. You know where I stand, right? And many of you agree with me, but not all of you do. And I think all of us have people in our lives with whom we disagree deeply on the Trump administration. It is painful because it feels very personal for many of us. It feels very personal for me as the mother of a black son. Right? It feels very personal to me because my friend Julia and many of my other friends, you know, families that are being called, their, their very existence is called into question. Ability to, right? And, and you could go on and on and on. And immigrants in our lives. My son is an immigrant. I think, what else could happen? Anyway, anyway, anyway. It is painful. It is personal. Relationships are strained. People are cut off from one another, not only because of the pandemic, but because of political differences. <sighs> it's just hard. Years ago, I heard or read, there is no truth, only data to be manipulated. There is no truth, only data to be manipulated. And at the time, I mean, this has been 15 years at least, at the time it, it struck me as incredibly cynical, but not wrong. <laughs> um, and now it feels like in that time it has grown legs and arms and a huge body and is a monster walking around and destroying our democracy and our social fabric. There is no truth only data to be manipulated. What do we do when we can't agree on what the truth is, what the facts are, where to look for answers, who sources that, you, that are trustworthy? How do we move forward as a nation when our starting points for making sense of what is happening are at odds. They're just diametrically opposed. They're really, are they irre irreconcilable? It kind of feels that way. And, I mean, I don't know. It just, it just makes me want to weep. It just makes me want to weep. So see, I'm being the downer. Long before we knew uh, how the election would end up, I decided that it would be appropriate to have this Sunday after the election be a service that focused on lament and repentance. You know, this is partly because of, because of the, the, um, the Bible study we're doing on lament. Um, and just a, a, a paragraph from that study. 
Lament is a prophet. Is that written down correctly? I think it's supposed to be lament is a prophetic liturgical response to the suffering and sorrow of the real world. Prayers of lament are petitions to God that come out of real need. When we offer prayers of lament to God, we declare our trust in God and our dependence upon God. We acknowledge the depths and effects of suffering on human beings and on creation. When we lament, we acknowledge the depths and effects of suffering on human beings and on creation. Now, repentance is a little different. When when there is a situation over which we have some control, for example, the suffering and violence caused by poverty, by economic injustice and systemic racism, for example, you know, these things in which we do sadly contribute to, even though it's such a big system, it feels virtually impossible to extricate ourselves from it. But, but in that case, our response does not call for lament so much as it does repentance. When we repent, we confess. We name our inaction. Um, I would argue that we, in this time, we need more of both lament and repentance in our liturgical life and the worship that we share. There is so much suffering, so much injustice in our world, in our country, and so much of it is deeply woven into our economic system, into our political system, into our cultural life, the very fabric of how we live. It feels so much bigger than any of us individually. It is difficult to get our arms or our heads around it or have any idea where do we even begin to repair this. As people of faith, we what better place for us to begin than in a position of prayer, of naming this sin, because it is sin, honestly and completely, as completely as possible before God. When we confess, when we lament, when we pray, we put ourselves in connection with God, mindfully. I believe that God, unbidden or unbidden God, is present. But when we do the praying, we mindfully put ourselves, open up that connection with God and with the world that God loves. Putting ourselves in that time of prayer, lament, um, uh, confession, It can also give us new eyes to see what God is up to. Uh, And somehow, God uses our prayers to open up new possibilities in us and in the world. Somehow, it, it, it brings us into what God is up to. There's a, a, a short sentence in the study that says, we lament in order to hope. I think that's, that's good. I know I could use some hope. And so that is what we will do in a moment. So I, um, I invited you to share laments uh, with me via email or text, or I put a, um, a post up on Facebook, invited to have responses to that, and I, I didn't hear from anybody. <laughs> But I think I know why. I, um, I asked my husband this morning, I was, you know, as I'm continuing to work on my prayer of lament, I said, what should we lament? And he replied, what shouldn't we lament? Is that about right? I mean, where do you even start, right? Where do you even start? So um, I did get some help from Tuesday's lament Bible study class. We started to do an acrostic lament, and I think this would be really interesting to do. Um, maybe, you know, maybe this would be something that, might be helpful for you. I don't know. An acrostic is in the Psalms um, where uh, it, the, we can't tell because we're not reading it in the Hebrew, but a psalm that each line starts, each verse starts with a different letter of the alphabet, obviously the Hebrew alphabet. So you just write A through Z and you write down something for each letter that you're concerned about, that you're, that you're lamenting. So we started to do that, um, an acrostic lament on Tuesday, but we didn't finish so, um, so these words are mine. I ask you to forgive me for what I've forgotten. But like what my husband said, what shouldn't we lament? Um, but I also want to think of this as the first installment, because I do think 
there's plenty to lament and to repent of. And uh, the season of Advent is coming, and, and that is also a, a, a penitential season. So we will, we will continue to do that. So um, just a, just a reminder, uh, not a reminder, instruction. Um, I'm going to invite you to respond, and I think this is written down in your bulletin. I will say, and your people cry, and you're invited to respond, how long, O Lord? So um, I hope that you will do that. So I invite you to just take a moment and take, take another deep breath. And uh, take a moment to mindfully, deliberately, with all of your being, connect with God as I lead us in prayer. Gracious God, by day and night, we pour out our prayer to you. We are crying out for justice, yearning for what is right, longing for your peace. Come quickly to help us, O oh God. Save those who call upon your name. O oh God, for the deep divisions in our country that have been made clear in this election season, we lament the anger that so many people feel and express too often in unhelpful and unhealthy ways. And for this anger that we have that we don't know what to do with. We lament the ways that truth has become a lie. We lament threats and accusations of violence and the demonization of those with whom we disagree. That's a repentance. We repent of that. We repent of all the ways that we have fallen apart instead of coming together in this foundational um, time of our, of our nation of voting for our next round of leaders. And your people cry, How, How long, O oh Lord? Lord? For those whose lives are demeaned and burdened by the racism that exists in our nation, for the toll on physical, mental, and spiritual health, for the same and demeaning and burden experienced by our family, extended family um, around uh, immigration status, around our LGBTQ uh, family members, um, and, and f for all the ways that people are marginalized, especially trans people, for the ways in which the privileged and the advantaged just refuse to see that burden, that, um, that drain on health and safety. And so your people cry, how long, O oh Lord? Oh God, this time of COVID, we're so tired. We pray for people who currently have the virus, especially those who are in critical condition and separated from their loved ones, unable to be comforted by them. We pray for people who have died from this awful disease. We pray for health care workers and hospitals working so hard to keep up, um, who are burdened by the increasing cases. We pray for schools and teachers and students and families who have just completely readjusted their lives to respond to this. We pray for frontline workers. Um, we pray for everyone who has lost work, jobs that are, that are gone, people who have lost hours. We pray for the isolated. We pray for the mental health toll that the pandemic takes on all of us. We pray for the difficult decisions the pandemic asks of us in terms of gathering with others for 
the celebrations in life that we have taken for granted, and for the hard feelings that grow from differing attitudes towards doing this. Um, we pray uh, for our depleted energy and mental um, clarity. <laughs> we pray for the burden of not knowing how long how many more weeks, how many more cases, when will it end? And so your people cry, how long, O oh Lord? God, we pray for our environment, for topsy-turvy weather like cold Octobers and warm Novembers, and an inland hurricane in Iowa. We pray for trees that were lost, and for natural places like state parks, places like Palisades, Kepler, that are close to us, places where many of us found solace and rest and health, but that are close to us for the time being. We pray for poisoned air and water and land. We confess our, and repent of our consumption that devours the natural resources of our world. We repent that so many creatures have lost habitat, their lives, their existence, because of our consumption. We repent that we have not cared for creation the way we should have. And we repent of the dilemma that we're in. How can we go backwards from the way that we live? How can we take a step backward? How do we move forward? How do we prioritize um, creation and have economic security and job security? How do we do that? Oh God, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. And your people cry, how long, O oh, oh Lord? I'm going to allow you a time to name what I've forgotten silently or just where you find yourselves. And if any of you in the room have anything you want to lift up, go right ahead. Your people cry, how long, O oh Lord? Gracious God, keep us working and praying for the day when your justice will roll down like waters and your righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Replenish our strength and stir up our hope as we look for signs of your coming close, of your reign in our midst. And, oh God, we ask that you would fill us with the peace that, the peace that passes understanding, the deep peace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, in whose holy name we pray the prayer that he taught. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy, thy will, will be done. Be done. On, on earth as, as it, it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead, and lead us, us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, and the, and the power, and the, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And we're going to sing another today chant. Number 294, 294, Within Our Darkest Night.
shown us the meaning of generosity in the beautiful diversity of creation, in the overflowing love of Jesus Christ, in the never-ending gift of the Holy Spirit. God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, to be servants to others with joy, to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and in what is ours to give. All right, off to our dance party. together. God of, of extravagant, extravagant mercy, with, with hands outstretched, you have poured out wonder and pleasure and delight, goodness and beauty and bounty. So take these offerings, we pray, as our protest against all that is evil and ugly and impoverished, trivial and wretched and tyrannical in our, our world and in ourselves. And thus may we and others know ourselves to be blessed. Amen. Amen. And our final hymn is 100, Canticle of the Turning, which is based on Mary's Magnificat, which is very, very Adventy, but by golly, it's the right song for today. So let's sing it.
let it be so. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. The saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. That is our hope. That is our hope. So friends, go out into the world in peace and in hope to be signs of God's reconciliation and love like we say so many times in our words of assurance or passing in the peace. Let us be signs of God's reconciliation and love. Let us rest. Let's be cat-like and rest in God. Be still and know so God can repent and heal and transform us so that we in turn can share that peace, that healing and that transformation with others and be part of that in God's God's world. And as we seek to do that, remember remember what is true right at this moment. That the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit are in us, are in between us, and are out there in the world ahead of us, this day, this moment, and forevermore.